There we go. How about them apples? Patrick, Stop. go to the bathroom. <laughs> I think he already went down the bed. You went to bed already? Look at this. They got me. I'm looking at my thing. It is, but it's got auxiliary, so we're going to try to I put the salt in Brian, talk. Talk. Are you guys ready? There we go. Yes. So I've been writing a book for the last, I don't know how long, okay. six months or so. Focus. Screwing around with it. Has it been a year? Whatever. Quality is what it is. <laughs> you have to learn it as I write it. It's usually the way it is with most of my books. It's usually because I'm figuring something out. I'm learning something. I'm going through something. Not because of some shit I've read or somebody told me. It's life. And as you go through life, you begin to understand. The great litmus test for anything that that, that I deal with and also true when I see it or hear it. How does that help me put food on the table? How does that help me have a healthy relationship with my daughter or the people that I love or my girlfriend, my old lady? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other way around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How does that help me be successful in the various arenas of life that we all have to perform in, um, in today's world? I mean, be it a job, be it at home, be it just fucking, I guess these days, just going to the damn store. There's a lot of things that people say we got to know that I don't think really are that important. So this book over the last year has been an in-depth examination of what it is our gods have sacrificed in order to become what they want to become. Focusing on two in particular, four in particular, really, Freya and Freya, the things, their ordeals that they've gone through, what the masculine sacrifices to become something new, to engage in a relationship, a healthy relationship with the feminine, and what the feminine must deal with as she is abandoned by the masculine, only to be rejoined by a more complete masculine image when Svipdag returns to Mingloth, the one clad with the necklace. How do those two examples come together? because we do have another pair. And the book, the working title has been The Divine Twins, The Lovers, and the Path of the Black Sun. And I was thinking about the Black Sun. There is the, there is the dumbass Nazi tile pattern, but there is an original idea that goes behind that from much older sources. Where would a Black Sun shine? other than in the realm of hell, the sun-facing goddess. So if you've read any of my work, there is an idea that I had about Odin sacrificing himself to himself. And at the moment of death, when he heard the songs of his ancestors and he fell or was cut down shrieking as he died. And at the bottom of that, he picked up the runes. And I have long held that the runes are the crystalline knowledge of all of the ancestors that have gone on before him. As such, they represent the keys to the universe. <clears throat> That's an amazing amount of information. So we come across these two individuals, Freya and Freya, these divine twins, and divine twins show up in mythologies all over the world, uh, irregardless of time, geography, or culture. Divine twins are an important parallel throughout all of it. A a complementing competing force of masculine and feminine. Now that's something I can use in my life because I'm not real good at having successful relationships. So it might behoove me to take a real good close look at that, see if I might cultivate within myself the ability to handle some of that. To date, I still suck. <laughs> we have two individuals that die in the middle of everything, all of the nonsense that's going on in Asgard. We have all these tales of manly men doing manly things and beautiful women sitting around being pretty and, and all of these wonderful things. Then we have two that died. Death in mythology, death in religion is always a representation of radical transformation into something better. So when Balder dies and Nana dies alongside him when her heart bursts, 
we have a powerful indication that she he created an environment that was so valuable to her that her idea of being without it was beyond her comprehension and it broke her heart. And we can get into the dynamics of that, but I think the idea that these two take a path different from all the rest is the most important. Because at the edge of death is where Odin sacrificing, killing his ego, when he began to sacrifice himself to himself, he is literally removing from himself the ego that lost him a throne. When the Vanir said, does worship belong to one or does it belong to all? That's what started the Aesir Vanir War, not the burning of Golveg, the lover of gold. So we have Balder, which nothing can hurt. And like the uh, frat boy quarterback that always gets by and everything is going perfect for him, and he never has to suffer for his, consequ his consequences of his actions, walking around with his chest stuck out and his head held high, the golden child, the, the one that you might be cool enough to be his friend, but more often than not, you're going to think he's a dick. Uh, you can't beat him. You ain't going to hurt him with anything. But then the ego speaks to the blind at the edge of the crowd. Blindness is the default status of people in today's world. We cannot see the forest for the trees. We cannot see our nose to spite our own face. We see those things that we choose to see that empower us, that make us feel righteously indignant, that give us a justification for excesses of personal behavior that may not naturally be accepted in society. Here's the one that had the best of all worlds. Somehow he knew how to love a woman properly and he dies. Now, he also begins a journey when he hears the songs of his ancestors. He takes up a high seat in Hell's Hall, a golden seat, as it is said in, I think, the short Voluspa. Perhaps not. I can't remember the name of that book. But Odin asks this other vulva that he calls forward, what, what's, what's going on here? And she tells him that there's a high seat prepared for Balder, a golden seat. He's going to sit in a place of honor in the hall of the goddess Hell. Hell's realm is the repository of all of the information, of all of the ancestors, of all of the people that have died, minus your warriors that are in Folkvang, Vingol, or Valhalla. Everything that has been known or discovered or understood or comprehended or talked about or believed in is in that realm. She's the guardian of all of it. And now all of a sudden, Odin's son, Odin, who has had a taste of it, now Odin's son has access to all of it. Well, Frigga has an issue with that. No mother likes to lose their child. So she asks a hero to ride down there and see if we can barter for his release. We all know that story. And he ends up staying there. But the important thing to notice about him staying there is, as I've said many, many times, is that he sends Draupnir back to his father, the chieftain that needs it. Because you had to be a very powerful chieftain, a wealthy chieftain, to give out nine armbands every ninth night to nine new warriors that are willing to serve you and be responsible for their care. You know, just give them an armband and they're on their own. You give them an armband, it's a two-way, oaths are two-way streets in all cases. Now, Nan is the one that sends back the important gift. Because when a young man leaves the comfort of his mother, when a man steps away from the safety net of being loved simply because he exists by his parents, he begins to take the journey into masculinity. Same thing with a woman. When she begins to step away from the comfort of just being loved because she exists by her father and mother and takes a new man into her life to replace them, <laughs> this is a significant event. It is, in some cases, can be traumatic. In some cases, it can be joyful. In some cases, it can be the kind of coupling that we all dream for. And I think at the end of the day, when, we, when I'm writing this book, I'm asking the question, what the fuck is happily ever after? What does that look like? 
The answer is there with Balder and Nana. She sends back to his mother a couple of garments that are a couple of things that are very important. One is the homespun garment. Every young man that leaves the home to go slay the dragons of his world steps forth from his home wearing a garment his mother made for him. Nana sends that back. That is a sign that she is now the main woman in his life. She also sends back to her sister, she sends back to Fulla, a golden finger ring. And this is an important thing for a young woman who is concerned. Can I have children? Can I be a good wife? Can I, can I do all these things society expects a woman who is going to be a wife to be? Far be it for me to understand the entirety of them all. But for a sister to send that back to another sister, that's quite a reassurance. It's going to be okay. I think that's a very beautiful thing. <clears throat> and then they begin their journey through Helheim on their own. Two people who love each other very much, walking away from all of the nonsense and bullshit going on in the society behind them. And if you look at the entirety of what's going on in Asgard, there's a lot of fucking drama. There's a lot of gods and goddesses dealing with shortcomings that are trying to rise above their origination from Jotun stock to become something better, to become worthy of individuals that can sit at the table and justify their position there because of the things they've done, said, and, and grown into something more than from which they originated. These two lovers now follow the path of a black sun that shines in the netherworld where all of the cumulative knowledge of everything is. That's an important thing to consider because that gives me some idea of what it takes to have a successful relationship. Staying involved in all of the nonsensical drama that goes on in modern day society may not necessarily be the best thing to help your relationship survive. <laughs> but you think about it. You think about it, you question it. There's not a lot written about it. So I've got to figure out what this means. Yesterday at work, I was sitting there contemplating these wonderful things as I walked around and looked important. <laughs> Which is what I do. And I thought that it is indeed a fantastic journey. Mm. I wrote this. Yeah, fantastic voyage. We'll call it that too. That's the second sentence. I, didn't, I, got, I, got, that part. I got that part. Honey. I know it is, but I didn't want it to be like the song, so I wrote journey. Okay. <laughs> this voyage through the through the life of a man and a woman. But it is a it is a wonderful thing. So much will happen in life. So many things will happen. You hardly know. It's just like J.R. Tolkien says, you hardly know what will happen when you step outside that front door. You don't know which path your feet will take you. You don't know where you'll end up. You, know, you might end up in California, you might end up in Minnesota, or back in Oklahoma or Texas or Missouri. You don't know where you're going to end up in life. But you're going to have to grow and develop through all of it. Or you're going to move to a new place and repeat the same pattern and end up with another powerful reminder that you've got a long way to go. These two don't have that. These two don't have a choice. Make it or break it. But in the end, at, after Ragnarok, we find Balder alone. No mention is given concerning Nana. Perhaps she is with him still, perhaps not. But we have seen that Freya has built a piece of heaven for women, every bit as much as she has for the first of the slain on the battlefield. And, you know, you got to wonder, what is the litmus test to be picked by her? Because I would really like to know that part. That might be kind of cool. So I'm sure there's grapes and wine in her place, not bacon and meat. <laughs> That's probably all of it. Probably is all of it. Yeah. A bunch of portly women. <laughs> Good cook. Huh? Stop. 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 <clears throat> but be that as it may, Freya has her hill of healing for women who have suffered through life. They have endured the worst of it and bear the scars of life to prove it. And theirs is a place of true healing. And from that healing, they are empowered to help many others. 
So here we have an example of what for Nana might have done. Perhaps she has found a place to create healing for those women that are still suffering, that are dealing with the scars of life. Who knows? Freya has. She has created, Mingloth has created the Hill of Healing. And it is a very special place. It helps a woman dealing as a, as a, and as they are healed, they are also empowered to help many others. And I think that's the real true quality of us growing into something more than we were is our ability to help others grow into something as well, to help them set aside the shortcomings and the pain. Freya provides that feminine example in this. Um, Nana doesn't show up at Ragnarok, or we're not told that she does, and I don't know why. But in Orden's Corp Galder, it says they're all still there, even Odin and Thor, simply that Iden has fallen from Asgard to the world. But I digress. <clears throat> The Balder, well, he shows up alone as a man who has completed the journey of growth. And we can really look at it that way, too, because he has completed the journey of growth. Perhaps losing a woman and dealing with that pain is a part of it all. In the end, he is surrounded by brothers, by family, by men of the tribe. And maybe there is a point that after so much pain, where we lose the childhood ability to believe in love. And for those who are so scarred, this is a fine alternative. To be surrounded by powerful, confident, achieved, strong men, brothers, family. Sometimes we might have to realize that's the best we are worth, best we are capable of. And that's a good place. It ain't that it's bad. It's that that's the best you have in this go around. Who knows what happens on the next go around? It might become something much better. Something more beautiful might occur. But in and of itself, that's a pretty good thing. So Freya has created a hill of healing where these women who wander off by themselves to deal with the pain, the heartache, the loss, the struggle, their, their ability to endure as women, as feminine ideas has been stretched to the ultimate limit. Men have to deal with it too. Men have two separate places. We have a hill of healing. And after Ragnarok, after everything is destroyed, many men and women have gone through life where literally everything about their life has been fucking destroyed and, and torn apart and they've lost it all. And they find their family and they find their brothers and they find people they can stand with and they start building all over. This is Ragnarok. Every person deals with in their life. As above, so below. From the sailor destruction that happens with a cancer or a sickness to our bodies degrading with age to the earth as it changes to the solar system as it rotates and gravity changes and solar flares destroy shit to our cosmos with black holes. <coughs> Everything gets destroyed, changed and reborn. Ragnarok. Our personal lives are no different. Maybe there is a point after all that so much pain we lose the childhood ability to believe in love. And for those who are so scarred, this is a fine alternative. I said that. Pain builds our character. There's no other greater teacher than pain. Kid, Little kid grabs a hot stove, they'll never fucking do that again. For a reason, because it hurts. Unless you're stupid. And sometimes if we are wrapped up in our ego or the how much ever we drink or however many drugs we decide to do or however, whatever kind of, whether we're binging and purging or whatever kind of excessive behavior that we decide to engage in to cover up that pain, we'll repeat the process because maybe, maybe this time we'll get it right. That is the lesson of tear trying to bind the Fenris wolf. Three times they try. The last time, it cost him something. He has to make a sacrifice. He loses a hand. And every time we try, it costs us something. But, see, it is the scars of life which weave the tightest bonds of brother and sisterhood. 
when we understand, when we see in someone else what they've gone through and we've had to deal with, and we can stand next to each other as individuals who have come through that, not as victims sharing the commonality of, oh, I suffered too, and this sucked, and life has been hard, but I made it. A big difference in how tightly we weave that pattern of our Inangarth amongst people that have all gone through the same thing. Did they make it through? Or are they still reliving it every day so they can be a victim? And that's a real question we have to ask ourselves. Did Balder and Nana learn this as they moved through? Did they constantly mourn the loss of their wonderful lives in Asgard? Or did they grow into something more? I would submit to you that they have. Somehow in all of this though, through all of that pain, guess what power holds the most sway? It is love. The love of your brother, a sister's love for a sister, parents' love for a child. It is always love that holds the final sway. Once you sort through all of the bullshit that's controlling your thoughts and you feel it right there, and you begin to become aware of, I've made it. These people are still standing next to me. There's a real, that's where that weave of the powerful bond truly comes into play. If by chance you happen to come across someone on your own journey who has what it takes to stand beside you, understand we can't explain that. I can, we may wax poetic about, and well, it should be. Song sung and praise is given, but we don't question it and we need to figure out how to let it be. How much brighter the future might seem if we were to know that Balder and Nana completed this journey together. Amongst fields which bear ripened fruit and grain unsown, I love that part. <laughs> <laughs> Where the eagle perches by the sea and all ills grow better. Yeah, exactly. We saw two eagles on the lake today. It's still frozen. It's gorgeous. If Balder and Hoda reside in Hrope's battle hall, that is Valhalla, while the sons of gods and goddesses play games on golden tables, perhaps in our lives, after the crying is over and the pain is lessened, maybe we too might find a place to enjoy that opiate of the masses, that is to say, hope. There you go. That's what I'm working on. What do you think about that, Melissa? That was pretty awesome. Thank you. Thank Goddamn you right. It was fun. awesome. I'm Brian Wilkins. Sorry Wilk. for the comments <laughs> from the peanut gallery. <laughs> you look very sexy. I feel pretty sexy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working out. Hey, I work out. You got to see my glutes. <laughs> yeah. <My> no. <laughs> she said no. You squat? Of course I squat. All right. To pee. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, no, no. No. Hey, uh-uh. Uh-uh, buddy. Anybody have any questions about any of that? I'd be love to discuss it. I thought it was good, man. I really, I actually was inclined. I'm sorry, go ahead. I appreciate that. I can barely hear you back there. I met you years back in at Midsummer at Odin Talk. Oh, fuck. And I had to collect some things in my own life, and I just moved out here in January from uh, from uh, California to Harrison, actually, Arkansas. And I found it uh, really uh, intriguing how some of that was talking about travel. It was like, you didn't plan that for me, obviously, but it, it felt like it was connected to me. And I don't know, I felt, I felt uh, it was inspiring almost. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. I really do. It is... Uh... It is interesting how that happens. California to Arkansas, it's it's a big difference, but then you get, I mean, but it's also, uh, you know, that's the wanderer. That's that's our, that's our, there's something inside of us built for that very thing. <laughs> and the people are different and what you're going to learn is going to be different. Yeah. We're better here. <laughs> Wow. That's, that's right. Cool. That's right. We're better here in the Midwest. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A little more laid back. <laughs> as Brian is finding out. Yeah. Minnesota nice is actually a thing, and Brian hasn't exactly navigated that yet. Yeah, somebody said hello to Shanae the other day in a car, and I'm like, fuck you. I didn't know who it was. I didn't know what they said. It was my default position. Like, Shut up, you psycho. It was literally something that's re- somebody that's related to my daughter, both of them cousins. I didn't know. I just heard somebody yelling at the car. <laughs> Mind you, my daughter is related to over 50% of the town that I live in. That's like 300 and some people. What? <laughs> awesome. So when are you going to release that? You know, I could probably finish it tomorrow, but I was thinking today it's not long enough. I need to write some more in it. We'll see what happens. You're going to proofread it? No. Yes, I'm going to. That's right. Run on sentences. <laughs> They're gonna think uh, Brian got a ghostwriter. <laughs> well, I know, yeah. right? I notice that when I read the book. Sometimes I'm like, "Damn it! Why didn't I proofread?" <laughs> it's all good. Grammarly. He's grammarly. It helps. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We just like to rag on you, man. Oh, I know, and you know exactly. I know, <laughs> but see, the thing is, is if you can read Probably the Bible. <laughs> Uh, Brian just... like Brian. <laughs> I don't know. You love Milwaukee. <laughs> it's close. It's close. It's close. <laughs> Are you gonna make it down to Bottershoff, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I love to watch yeah. it. We're gonna we're gonna go down there. We're gonna stay at her mom's and we'll be there Saturday morning. Yeah, I've only been to the oldest hop. I'm like, I'm I'm rather rather ecstatic about uh, seeing another hop. It's pretty it's a neat deal, man. Odin's hop was yeah, I remember that. That's a neat deal. As long as the commies stay away, yeah. we'll be okay. We've got, um, I don't know if you can see them over there, but Rex and Chris, I think you're going to go with us too, if you guys want to see Good. Them. Awesome. Nice to meet you. And then Randy and Letitia will be there with us too. I think you know that already. Yes, I know them. They're a couple of good people. Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> Where's they're Randy okay. and the baby? There's Randy. Oh, no, no. Randy and the baby there. are at home. Are they? Yeah, they're at home. She's being a mom, taking care of her baby. She's upset that I didn't bring the baby. <laughs> She's good. Good. Me and my baby are right there. Good deal. Look how pretty she is. Uh-huh. All I see is a little head. Look at that little baby, Shanae. Guess what? That's Aww. Lane's baby. Oh. I want one. No, oh, not. No. I don't want one. No. Not like that. I'll be 70 when it's <laughs> Brian, you don't need no more. For real, man, you're like a hundred years old. Oh, who are <laughs> hey. Yeah, exactly. You're at least halfway there. I am halfway there. I'm still a bad motherfucker, too. <laughs> I can take you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. I can't wait to see you guys. I look forward to y'all coming up to see Baldur's Hall. I'm looking forward to seeing Baldur's Hall. It's mm-hmm. like five hours south of me, which is kind of aggravating. I was bummed Where are you at? when I went to Midsummer, well, not last year, but two years ago, I had asked Matt about it, and I was like, are you going to make it central Minnesota, or are you going to make it southern Minnesota? Because there are people... You know, further north, that yeah. that kind of sucks to travel five hours. Yeah. If you put it more central in the state, you only got about about three and a half, four hours between any central point. I think they ran into problems with property, though. Yeah. 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 Like, Carl, they some properties, so. and the people wouldn't sell to them because most of the the properties are owned by the church, and the church didn't want to sell to the Austrian Assembly. Yeah, like, that's why like I suggested five, private property. Like five fucking times. Yep. I know. So how do you like living in Canada up there? <laughs> I'm literally like an hour and a half south of the Canadian border. Hour and a half my ass. It's like three hours. Oh. It Should is. Like- International Falls is three hours. Okay, is that well. right, eh? <laughs> yes, eh. A is Canada. He is Minnesota. 
That's right. She listens, to these Canadian, she listens to these Canadian dudes on, on D Live or whatever. I do like one of them. He's a bumper sticker that says F U M M. Fuck you, make me. F Y M M. Fuck you, make me. The Raging Dissident. No, the Plaid Army. Yeah, they're they're something else, but hey, they talk just like us. All I know is I landed this job that I have, which is turning out to be a pretty good gig. And I have found myself surrounded by some pretty nice supportive uh individuals that are just that are interested in building success with each other that's a rare thing to come across these days and to find that uh here just uh, you know out of the fucking blue um, i like it i like it it's beautiful up here I like my pine trees needs more big mountains but we'll figure that well, out later. honey you haven't been into the pits yet those are the mountains of the range this okay. is iron ore country, honey. I know what it is. <laughs> but I, anyway. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. We appreciate it. And sorry for the trouble of getting on to initially. Thanks for staying with hey, us. It's no big deal. I appreciate I appreciate you having me. And I hope y'all have a good time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you missed some of us. We had we had a bigger group here, but they had to get taken off. So oh. Well. Next yeah. time. It'll be better. I'll see you <laughs> soon. You yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Yes, you, tomorrow. Yeah. I'll do something great tomorrow. Probably say the same thing, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee right. you won't say the same thing. You won't remember what you said tomorrow today. No, this was the test run. He's got it written in front of him. Yeah, that's what? the end of the book. <laughs> I wrote the end of the damn book. I came up with that. You shoot from the hip kind of guy. I am most of the time, but sometimes when it's really good, it's I got to put it on paper. That's All right. right, then. That's how you got your book. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a good time. Thanks, you, you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Have a good night.